All right, Sagar, what's on your radar? Well, there are many enemies of the people in the American elite, almost too many to count. But if you were to put a gun to my head and force me to choose which specific area of American life most are concentrated, it probably wouldn't surprise many of you to hear me say Wall Street. And among Wall Street, it is the hedge funders. And within the hedge funders, it is a specific set of people known as the short sellers. For years, the short sellers have colluded amongst themselves, used the media and more to manipulate markets and specific stocks by forcing massive runs on well-meaning companies, all so that they can make billions on the flip side. None of this has anything to do with creating value, making money in a good fashion, or anything of production. It is simply leeching off the American financial system to the tune of hundreds of billions of dollars for a select group of the financial elite. And for years, they've run the table. Until now, where the first populist uprising in finance just toppled a few select Wall Street titans, which is ushering in what I hope is a new era of democratized finance. Now, before I begin, I want to make clear I do not condone short selling, buying stocks, gamification, or speculation. In fact, I mostly think it's bad for everyone, and you should in no way construe this segment as financial advice. So let's get to our tale. It starts with GameStop. Yes, you heard me right. GameStop, that store that you probably haven't been to in like a decade. Now, the story of GameStop and its recent market actions is itself a tale of corruption within the Wall Street elite and how a band of mostly young, underemployed, and spiteful millennials banded together to make them pay a real price for the first time in decades. Major Wall Street institutions like Melvin Capital, which is managed by Gabe Plotkin, took out huge short positions on GameStop stock. They were joined by analysts like Andrew Left of Citron Research in taking the public position that GameStop stock would go down. Now, this is a classic Wall Street maneuver. You take a short position, you and many others in the financial in circle all say publicly the stock is going to go down, which causes people who care about what they do to sell. The stock goes down, they make a lot of money. Well, now they've been literally doing this for years. But then a merry band of people on Reddit, they took notice on a subreddit. It's called Wall Street Bets. It has 2.2 million traders. And they said, you know what? Hold on a second. A user in April 2020 took notice that 84% of all GameStop stock at the time was held in short, a massive bet for no discernible reason. That Reddit user implored others to buy the stock and to instruct their own brokers not to allow their shares to be lent towards short positions of short sellers. This alone caused the stock to soar by nearly 50% in a single day, which, as Bloomberg notes, was the biggest gain in 18 years of the company history. But this is where things get really crazy. Slowly, other Redditors began to realize that by banding together, they could do two things. First, that their power in numbers combined with the power of trading platforms like Robinhood could enable them to act together. And two, that by pushing the stock up collectively, they could make more money and screw over major heavy hitters on Wall Street. To be clear, this is all speculative and gambling, and it's bad. But a lot of people are going to lose a lot of money. But if this entire thing is a scheme, and it's all made up anyways, then why shouldn't the little guys make some of the money instead of the titans? And that's what's happened here. Soon, GameStop stock was up an eye-popping 1,100%. Right now, as I'm giving this monologue, the stock trades around $280 a share. Less than two weeks ago, it was 20. A few Redditors got rich. A few more are definitely going to get scammed. But what's really beautiful is who lost out. Melvin Capital, who is backed by some of the biggest guys on Wall Street, needed a $2.75 billion cash injection yesterday after losing billions on the stock. They declined a full 15% in just the first few weeks of the year. That's right. A bunch of people on Reddit with Robinhood accounts delivered a body blow to one of the biggest speculators on the street. You just love to see it. But apparently, I'm the only guy in media who does like to see it. Because over on the financial news channels, they are losing their minds. In fact, since I actually don't watch too much financial news, I saw Jim Cramer, of all people, who's making sense, after an analyst on CNBC accused Redditors of possible illegal collusion and then suggested, with a straight face, it might be foreign powers at work manipulating our markets. I'm serious. Take a listen. What kind of case do they have? We like the stock. We like the stock. I mean, that's 
That's the kid. Ryan Cohen got so, in. He bought 15 percent at eight dollars. He's on the board. We like the stock. How is that bad? Or do you think that they're concentrated and doing some sort of manipulation if they say they like the stock? Well, I don't know if they're concentrated because I don't have subpoena power and I can't really go well, out and look at it. I, don't even, I, I can, I can <laughs> argue. I don't even know if there are foreign powers at work here behind the scenes trying to make chaos off our markets. Look. Is there something in the water with these people? They have to blame Russia when something happens that they don't like? But what really you just witnessed is that when regular people do what the billionaires do, then they start crying about crimes. They want the SEC involved. They want to know if it's illegal when the little guy does what they do in a less highbrow version and without a suit on. That's what's at play here. Wall Street is shook because multi-billionaires who recklessly gambled on a stock are getting screwed. They're targeting average retail investors for having some fun online because it reveals just how much of a sham that this all is. People are referring to stocks that Redditors are buying, like Palantir and BlackBerry and Nokia and GameStop, as meme stocks, with the idea that their value is being memed into existence. But let me put on my Morpheus glasses and say this. What if I told you that many of the most valuable stocks on Wall Street are just as much, if not more so, of a joke and a meme? It's just that the people doing the memeing in their case has nothing to do with the normal people who are buying them, but instead an internal cartel of elites who take massive bets on normal companies and then manipulate markets through their allies in the media or by convincing other big shot investors to follow their lead. In other words, it's all fake, all of it. What the Wall Street elites can't stand is that the people other than them are making money. And over on CNBC, they're already campaigning to use their connections in government to go after. Take a listen. And there is something inherently wrong within the regulatory structure if this can be allowed. <laughs> oh, now something's wrong. It really is incredible. After looting billions during this pandemic, trillions of dollars in bailouts, what prompts a call for government action on CNBC? It's people making money online at the expense of the billionaire gambling class. <laughs> well, I, for one, think that the little guys online deserve just as much of a shot to be reckless as the hedge fund class. So game on. Mm. And Crystal, this, I've loved this story. I've been following it now for you know the last 72 hours or so. And it's just incredible. And just this morning, I wanted to make sure I could pull this too. CNBC, Squawk Box, had the gall to have on the CEO of the NASDAQ, the trading platform, in which they were calling for more regulation. When's the last time that you saw the head of a trading platform call for more regulation? Let's take a listen. I'm serious. I want you guys to see this. One of the things that we're talking about is maybe misinformation and, and uh, pump and dumps, and it's occurring on social media again. It just, uh, I, I'm wondering whether it's part of the same problem, the type of regulation that, that, uh, that we finally need to, uh, to consider. And like I said, I, we should always have a light touch with regulation, but you're, you're seeing the way things can get started. Again, this is different. Maybe it's Reddit. Maybe it's not Facebook. But you're seeing the, 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 the same situation. The, 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 at this point, it's not about an election. It's not about a, uh, an insurrection. But there are interesting things happening that, that seem to be spawned to some extent or at least, a, at least blown out of proportion by social media again, Adina. Well, I, I do think, though, that as we look at these new technologies that are there available to everyone, including investors, I, I think it's also important for regulators to understand that, you know, manipulation is manipulation, whether it's happening through a new technology medium or it's happening through traditional mail. Uh, so I think it's just a matter of making sure that we understand what the behavior is, what's underpinning the behavior and working appropriately with the regulators to to uh, to manage the situation. Oh, oh, yeah. Now they want regulation. God. They can let high frequency traders flash crash our markets. They let people drive up stocks. They meme their they've been memeing this stuff for decades. Right. But now that it's not them, that they can't control the information flow. Now they want to use the power of the SEC and FinCEN to go after a bunch of people on Reddit who are making like five hundred to a thousand dollars. Okay, get it. You just yeah. compared it to stop the steal. There you go. Like, yeah. oh, this is misinformation. Add that to the dude. It was like, oh, it could be yep. foreign, foreign interference. Where do they get this? Could be Rush is like, oh yeah. my yeah. God. Put it straight into my veins. Mm -hmm. This is all amazing. And all of your, you know, caveats. This is not investment Don't advice. do it. It's bad. Any of yeah. it. Like, it's gambling. Yeah. It's reckless. It's begging. All that stuff. But they are trying to pull off and, and have actually, I think, pulled off 
the rarest of rare occurrences, which is an actual transfer of wealth from Wall Street That's right. to Main Street. Mm -hmm. I mean, without getting too bogged down in the mechanics of that, that's basically what you're talking about here. We always say on this show that the stock market is just a graph of rich mm -hmm. people's feelings. Now there's one teeny tiny little asterisk yeah. where it's a graph of these like regular people on Reddit, many of whom have gotten completely screwed over during the coronavirus pandemic. And so they have a lot of time on their mm -hmm. hands to look around at these stocks and see what's going on of them being able to actually get in on the game. And to watch these people lose their minds is incredible. We were just looking at a story just before we came on that shows you how fake the market is, how elites are allowed to rig it and use it to their advantage all the time with zero consequences whatsoever. Nancy Pelosi is actually betting on Tesla, knowing potentially that Biden's electric vehicle plan yep. could benefit. Like, how is that legal? Mm -hmm. How is that kind of stuff legal? And you're worried about people on Reddit just being like, hey, let's buy this stock. Yeah, I mean, I remember, we actually covered this show. I wanted to make I bring it up. Back in March, remember billionaire Bill Ackman? He went the stock market spiraling during a 28-minute interview. He's one of the first people to say this thing is crashing. Well, at the same time, he was buying shares yeah. at the market bottom. What's different about that? Nothing. But nobody cares. Bill, Bill's, he's a smart guy, right? It's all good. But when these guys do it, they, when Bill does it, do you see the CEO of the NASDAQ calling for regulation of his friend or for the SEC? commissioner or any of these other people investigating them absolutely not they can't they, they can't they cannot fathom that people are realizing it's all a fugazi like they say in wolf, wolf of wall street and whenever people average people begin to realize that and then realize that it's just this old system you know of just archaic people working the phones with each other selling stocks back and forth taking out massive short positions and more that they were making billions that all of a sudden now that you can put the idea in people's heads that you can disrupt that you can't take that away right so when you can't take that away then you have to use the government in order to crack down on them and we got to fight against this as as hard as we can. Look, if they want to pass a blanket U.S. law banning all speculation, I'm down. All of it. <laughs> Let's do it. I'm, I will put, you know, my seal of approval endorsement. I'll fight as hard as I possibly can. But that ain't going to happen. They just want to ban other people speculating and not their own speculation. That's what they can't stand. And here's the thing is like, it's not, I don't want to be overly simplistic here. It's not like short selling is always bad. Yeah, sometimes short sellers it's fine. Yeah. actually uncovered what was going on with Enron. Enron. Right. Short sellers uncovered some of them what was going on with the housing crisis mm -hmm. and the financial bubble there. But what you see in this instance with GameStop is that they just kept doubling down, doubling down on this position and aggressively dr destroying this company yes. and driving it into the ground, which has real world consequences for, for example, the Please. workers, the yeah. workers who, you know, rely on an income from working at GameStop. They're, they were so greedy mm -hmm. and they pushed this thing down so far and had had such an aggressive short selling position. That's what they're getting punished for. If they had shorted this in like a reasonable way and they would have made plenty right. of money there. But the fact that they wanted to drive the stock into the ground and essentially force a bankruptcy, that's what they're ultimately getting punished for here. So good. I love to see it. Yeah. I love to see that you're making all of these people so incredibly uncomfortable that they're crying to the Biden administration for new regulation. Amazing. Yeah, and I'm sure, you know, somebody in the Biden White House will be like, this is terrible, blah, blah, blah. Not, you know, the rest of the stuff that happens <laughs> within the market. It's just amazing. And one of the things that we're beginning to realize, if it's all fake, then we can mean what we want into existence. We can actually use our power as people in order to make it so that the stocks reflect what we want valued in our society. I was joking with some friends. So I've seen these new things. Hedge funds are now hiring chief meme officers to try to get their portfolio oh, companies that's real? get mean. I thought that no, was a joke. That's a real thing. That's a real thing. <laughs> Don't you can't put anything past these people. They're scum. Uh, but you know what? We should volunteer to try and push stocks up that are actually productive, like steel companies or the companies that actually pay their, their workers well and more. So if we have that within our power, why don't we do it? Because this is an easy way. You know, it's free market at its best. And that's something that we need to. What it is, is with the internet and more. We've seen this with how Bernie Sanders, how much did he raise during his campaign? $250 million? Uh, a lot of money. On an average donation of $20? Even on the Trump campaign. Look, I mean, you could say whatever you want about Trump, but like the guy raised a lot of small dollar donations. With the power of the internet and collective action, you can actually take 
major players down in politics. Not always going to work out. It's a very entrenched system. But this is actually a very hopeful and inspiring story. Yeah, or you could think about, it's actually really interesting because you could also think about um, pushing up the stock value of companies that really have broad-based profit-sharing agreements so that their workers and employees are actually cut in on when that stock price goes up. Um, Anyway, it's a fascinating story. It is a really, like, it really is a sort of titanic shift in the way that people are thinking about approaching the markets. Mm-hmm. And, of course, the elites are losing their mind over it. Loving it. Next on Rising, Team Rising is going to join us to discuss the latest on Trump's second impeachment trial. That one, Rising, returns. 